Hey, Angie from Block81 here. Over the years as a designer and front end developer, I have experimented with different ways to keep client files organized. After tinkering around with different methods, reading about how other people do it, um, even watching videos like this one, I finally settled on an organization method that has been super helpful to me. And so in today's video, I thought I'd share that with you. Okay, so the way things start is you have a prospect, right? And the prospect comes in, you talk to them, and you have to have some notes and maybe some documents that they send over. And so um, you put that into a prospective client's folder. At least that's, that's what I do. Um, then that prospect becomes a client, and then they get moved into the main client's folder. So here on my desktop, what I've done is I've created a clients folder. Now, my real clients folder actually doesn't live on my desktop. It lives on a hard drive. Um, but for confidentiality, I decided to go ahead and create kind of this dummy scenario. But just let's pretend that I have a lot more in here than, than I really do. So I'm going to open up that clients folder. And you can see I've got two folders in there already. I've got the perspective. Um, and I, I have that with an underscore so that it stays at the top. Um, that way I know that those are the clients that I need to follow up with, um, for potential projects. And right now that folder is empty. Um, and then the other folder is Mitch and Murray. So let's pretend this is a client called Mitch and Murray. Okay. So we've got three folders in Mitch and Murray. We've got an admin folder again, preceded with a, or prefixed rather with an underscore. And again, that's just so that it stays at the top of the, um, of the alpha alphanumeric ordering that that happens on on your machine um, then we have logo which has uh, which would be like a logo project so let's say um, i created the logo for mitch and marie then this is what the folder would look like and i'll get into this um, in a little bit then there's the website folder which is very similar but um, with that i usually include um, the name of the website the domain name because some clients actually have multiple websites. Uh, um, I have had a, a few clients and, and currently I'm working with a client that has multiple websites. And so we need multiple project folders and so they can't be named the same. So we may as well drop in the domain name. If you take a look at these folders, there's quite a lot of subfolders and some subfolders in some, in some, um, in some spots. So what I use is this handy little app called post haste to help me create all these things. So what post haste does, it allows you to set up templates um, for different folders. So for instance, I have a website template that allows me to create um, subfolders and even drop in some template files, if you want, um, that live on your machine. And it basically creates a copy for you. Um, so this is really handy. It's a really easy way to to get your folders up and running really quickly. OK, so going back to getting the setup, let's pretend I am talking to a, um, a company called Acme. I'm talking to someone at Acme and they want a website design. So the first thing I'm going to do, because there's still, a, there's still a pro prospect at this point is I'm going to create an admin folder and that admin folder is going to go, um, I'm going to name it in the folder name field admin. You can see I've done this a few times and I'm going to create the project and it's going to ask me where to put that folder. So I'm actually going to put that in the prospective folder here. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to create a new folder called Acme Inc. Because that's the client name. And then the admin folder will go in that client folder. All right, so it's done its thing. It opens up a new uh, finder window, unfortunately. But um, here is the new admin folder. OK, so going over this folder, I have these folders numbered because it just makes it easier and it kind of goes with the actual workflow of everything. Um, so for instance, number one is notes. Um, when I'm talking to a prospect, I'm taking notes for the various phone calls and discussions and meetings that we'll have. So those get placed in here. Um, I will usually write them out in pen and paper and I'll scan them and put them in here. So once I've got enough information, I'm ready to put together some internal estimates. And that's what this estimating folder is for. It's for internal estimating because I actually don't send estimates. I send either a proposal or a quote, which I'll get to in a little bit. 
The estimating is just for me internally um, uh, or my team. And I will set up an Excel spreadsheet and kind of put, you know, put down all the different things that the project is going to involve and how much it's going to cost, how much time it's going to take, that sort of thing. Once I've done that, then I can go ahead and put a proposal or a quote together. Now, for big projects, especially with new clients, I will actually put a proposal together. Um, for current clients and, and or smaller projects, I'll put a quote together. The reason being, once I've, I feel like once I've established a, a relationship with a client, we've worked on one or two projects together, I will, I, sending a proposal isn't as necessary because the project may not have as many moving parts and the, the, the subsequent projects are probably smaller. So it's not a huge project that has all these different moving parts that require all these different line items and it, it just looks more professional in proposal. However, a quote can make things a lot simpler, especially when your client is already used to how the way you work and understands your pricing and is just like, you know what, send me a number and we'll go from there. Okay, the next folder is invoices. This is pretty self-explanatory. This is where all the invoices that I send go in. Um, I drop them in here. To be honest, I'm actually not very good at keeping that up to date. Thankfully, it's all in the cloud somewhere, but <laughs> I'm terrible about putting them in here. And the same goes with number five, reports. Um, I usually do a, or I shouldn't say usually, sometimes I actually do a profit and loss report um, based on, um, you know, how many hours I spent, how much we quoted and all that good stuff. So I'll put those documents in here, but again, I'm not very good at keeping that up. <laughs> I should be, but I'm not. So let's say we've got this client, they signed our proposal and they're ready for us to build a website. So what I'll do is I'll actually move this client over into the main clients folder and then I'll head back into post haste and I will create a website folder. So for this, I will call it um, website, acmeinc.com, create that folder. I'm gonna put that in the Acme Inc folder. And here we go, okay. So here we go, we've got the website project folder. So again, these are numbered because it kind of goes with the workflow of the website project. So we start with assets. Assets is where I keep all of the different things that um, might be required for the project, like logos, fonts, um, color palettes, like if they send some sort of swatch file, that sort of thing, brand guidelines, things like that, photos that the client wants us to make sure that we include. Um, the next folder is surveys. So before we do anything as far as design or development goes on a website, we will send out questionnaires um, to our client. And when we get those back, when we get them all finalized, we turn them into PDFs and we put them into the surveys folder. From those surveys or those questionnaires, I create a creative brief. And that is basically our kind of North Star guiding light for uh, the project. It's a way for us to all be on the same page. The next folder is content. Um, again, before we do any design, we actually work with the content of the site because the content is what matters. The content is king. I'm not gonna get too deep into that, um, but the first thing we'll do is a content inventory. And what that entails is if they have an existing site, then I will go through it and make a note of all the pages and the URLs and see what needs to be organized, what needs to be stripped away, what needs to be added, that sort of thing. And I work with the client on that. Then the second folder is copy. So once we've done the content inventory, um, you know, I'll send them an outline and the copy folder is where we actually put in drafts of the content, the writing that we, that we actually do. So folder number five is the site flow. Depending on how detailed we get with the content inventory, we may or may not do a site flow. And site flow is another way of saying site map. Um, so I've got two folders in there for the live work, which is usually an Illustrator file, and it's just a sitemap file. Um, you might be able to see a preview here. It just looks a little like that. And then iterations is where we, those are where the, um, 
the actual deliverables go. So we'll take that Illustrator file and we'll turn it into a PDF and send that over to the client. And then those multiple iterations um, go into this folder here. Number six is wireframes. Once we've got the content and the sitemap down, if we do a sitemap, then we'll go into wireframes. And again, it's the same idea, the live work, the actual raw file that, that, uh, that I use to create the wireframe goes in this live work folder. Iterations is where the actual like PDFs or JPEGs live. Um, in this case, a lot of our wireframes are done either in Sketch or Adobe XD. And so those actually go um, into a prototype type of situation. So they don't, iterations don't actually live on in, in the iterations folder. Um, they can, but they usually don't. Once in a while we use Illustrator for wireframes. And then, so we'll turn those into PDFs um, and those will go into the iterations folder. But generally speaking, we're gonna use something like Sketch Cloud or Adobe XD, the prototyping feature that they have. Then we finally get into design. And the design folder is broken down into three folders, uh, subfolders. The first being the UI, which is the main uh, mockups, if you will. So the home page, the, the about page, contact us page, all the pages that we need to mock up. Um, the graphics folder, GFX, that's where we put in any assets that we're creating for the website. Maybe it's a specific style for a photo um, or icons or whatnot. We put those in here. So. Up until recently, I've been using Sketch to create all of my um, design mockups, and then I use it, I upload those up into InVision, and InVision allows for some basic prototyping. Um, but I'm slowly transitioning away from Sketch. Not entirely. I really like Sketch, and I'm not going to move away from it entirely. But um, I'm starting to use Adobe XD purely because their prototyping is far and above better than the one in Sketch and Sketch Cloud. Um, I know that InVision has released a beta version of Studio. I, I don't feel like it's fully baked yet, so I'm not using Studio just yet. So, um, so the iterations folder will often stay empty just because we're, I'm pushing those, those design files up to the cloud for prototyping. Once we get sign off on design though, then, then we move on to development. This dev folder actually stays empty a lot. Sometimes I'll put in some database backups in there uh, or I'll put notes on specific things that we did for for the website development wise, um, but there's not a lot that goes in here. Once everything is done, um, I actually will put together a user guide. I think all of the sites that we build um, are, are on some sort of content management system. And so there's a learning curve, even if we're just upgrading a client's content management system, there's still a little bit of a learning curve. So I'll put together a PDF, usually sometimes a video, but a PDF of how to use their content management system. And then the, I'll usually do that in um, Apple Pages actually, just because it's a lot faster. I've been using it for so long. And the PDF goes into that final folder and then I send that off to the client. If they ever lose it or whatever, then I, I have a copy of it. All right, so there you have it. That is how I organize my client files and folders. Um, I only went over the web design process just because I didn't wanna make this video any longer than it already is. Um, and the process is real similar for logo projects and print design projects. So having a good process is really important because it helps you not only during the design or development uh, phases or projects, um, but it also helps well after those projects are done when a client needs you to make a tweak on that ad that you made for them a year ago or that website that you built six months ago. So hopefully you got something out of this. And if you did, or if you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment.